Accounting Equation and Excel. Invoice Selling Inventory. Get ready and some coffee because we're about to learn the accounting foundation, the accounting equation with Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this, first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. This workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but started a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there, or you can just build your own worksheet as we go, or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, the answer key. The practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on is where we started with a blank worksheet but are basically continuing with a template at this point. However, adding to that template as needed as we go through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. Quick recap of what we've done thus far. First, we started to put our beginning balances in place, imagining that we have some beginning balances from an accounting software that we started before implementing our worksheet here using the accounting equation as basically our trial balance, which we will then use to create our financial statements. We then looked at some of the beginning journal entries often done when starting a new business, those being the need for capital, that being cash in essence, so that we can use the cash to then invest in what we need to help us generate revenue, that being the property, plant, and equipment, and inventory. Then we took the cash and we invested it in property, plant, equipment, and inventory. And now we're finally getting to the point where we're selling some of those inventory items. Now, when we sell items, if you're in a service type of business, it's going to be a little bit easier because you don't have to deal with the inventory. Although you might have to track, say, accounts receivable. Whereas if you're at a cash register, maybe you don't have to do that so much on the inventory side. So notice different industries will have different pros and cons. If you're a bookkeeper, you have to determine, do I want, what kind of clients do I want to basically specialize in? Because you can't really do everything, at least not off the bat, or it's hard to basically come up with a system that is as efficient as possible when your scope is too broad. So the question is going to be, am I dealing with clients that are going to have inventory? If they do have inventory, how am I going to deal with it? Am I going to track the inventory within the accounting system using a perpetual inventory system for larger comp companies possibly wanting a scanner and whatnot, like if I was in a store so that I can automatically record the inventory as it is scanned and I sell the inventory? Or do I want to track the inventory in an external software or in Excel, 
Possibly if I have a Shopify store or some kind of website online, I might use that website to track my inventory, thinking it's too tedious for me to pull all inventory items into my accounting software as well. Therefore, just adjusting my inventory on a periodic inventory system based on the physical count or my software that I'm, I'm using, which I would have to do at least yearly for taxes if you're in the United States reporting income tax purposes or for whatever reporting purposes that you need to do. All right, so we're gonna basically say that we have an internal uh, inventory and in our subledger. So we will manually adjust our subledger over here on a perpetual basis, simulating what you might expect to happen in like a grocery store if you're doing a self checkout where you can see the sales price but the cost and the inventory reduction is also being recorded automatically by the scanner. All right, let's go to the blank tab to see how this is going to work. So we're going to go on down and say that we want to now say on 116, let's say 116 tab, we are going to say that we're selling inventory. So we're going to say sell inventory and that form is going to be an invoice. And then it's going to be for Anderson Guitars. Now notice uh, when we're selling inventory, we could imagine selling it at a cash register type of situation or possibly in an online store where we would get paid at the same point in time, in which case we wouldn't use the data input form as an invoice. And remember, you always have to remember that people are going to say hey this is going to be automated because you'll scan it and then it'll be automated what are you talking about with an invoice those are antiquated terms but they're not antiquated terms because you still are going to have the data the audit trail that's going to be in the software even if it's an automated type of system that is being set up and the level of automation will depend upon the pros and cons of the industry that we're in and the size of the company and so on so you still need to kind of know this stuff so that you can set up uh, the system. So in other words, if it was at a cash register, you might, man you might do a scanner, but you would still see the data input form, which we might call like a sales receipt type of form uh, that would impact the, the payment at the point in time that the sale took place. If you're invoicing, you will recall that form means that we're billing the client. So maybe they ordered the inventory with a purchase order and we don't require them to pay us yet. We're going to ship them the guitar with the invoice in the guitar box, right? So once they get the inventory, then they pay us or something like that. That's what the invoice form is going to be, which means we need to know who the customer is because we're going to have a sub ledger by customer and we're also going to have to track the inventory. So I'm going to say that we sell an ELP, five ELPs. These are the types of guitars, the inventory that we're selling. An EPR, we need to know what these are because, of course, we're going to have to physically reduce the inventory. EPSH, we're going to say that we sell one of those. Now, I'm going to just type in the sales price here. So I'm going to say that each of these five units of the ELP cost $500. Each of these EPRs cost $550. And each of these EPSHs cost $400. And we have sales tax sales tax of 5%, 0.05%. I will say I won't record the 5% again every time, but that's going to be our automatic sales tax that we're going to imagine remembering that the double entry accounting system is basically universal, but taxes are not. There's no new tax under the sun, meaning governments have used have imagined all complicated all different kind of forms of taxes. It's just a a matter of where you are at what kind of tax is being implemented is it an income tax like we have in the united states for federal income tax or a usage tax like the sales tax in the united states on the state's type of side of things which is often in other countries that use that as their federal tax right so that's going to be our our sales tax okay so then so then let's first record the sales side the amount that we can see like in the grocery store if we do our own scanning we see the sales price we don't see the cost the same would be on the data input form the sales price not the cost because we don't want to give the cost to the customers otherwise they might try to go to the 
to the to our vendors art themselves and cut off the middleman, which is us, right? And so we don't want that to happen. We don't want them to see our markup. Although sometimes we might want them to see our markup because we want to be transparent and say, hey, look, you can try to go to the vendor, but you're not going to get as good a deal because we buy in bulk. That's why you're here. And I'm being straight up honest with you on it, right? But in any case, here we go. We're going to say this is going to be accounts receivable. So the accounts receivable, I'm going to post these individually per line item, which is often how you might see it in accounting software in the data field because each of them are going to have a different line item for the different inventory items, even though on an invoice, they might all be included on one invoice. So I'm going to record them separately here. So I'm going to say we have the 500 sales price times the five units that we're selling. That's not the end of the story, however, because we have a 5% sales tax. So that means I'm going to take whatever the result is. If I hit enter, it's 2,500 and increase it by another 5%. So how can I calculate that? I can say the 2,500 times 5% plus the 2,500, or I can say the 5% plus 100% is 105%. So I just, I'm just gonna take this whole thing and multiply it times 1.05, 105%, which gives me 2,625. Uh, now, the, the amount over the 2,500 is not the amount I get to keep, but I have to collect it in order to pay the government that amount. And then the sales side is gonna be over here. Sales, it's gonna be equal to the sales price 500 times five units, but no sales tax. I'm not gonna include the collection of the sales tax on the income statement. You can imagine a system where we would because you might say, why don't I include it here and then record sales tax expense when I pay the tax to the government? The idea is that the tax isn't on us, the owner. It's on the client, the customer. Therefore, it shouldn't be recorded as revenue to us. It should be off income statement on the balance sheet. And therefore, neither the income, the collection, or the expense will be on the income statement. It's just going to increase and decrease a balance sheet account called sales tax payable, which I don't have yet. So I'm going to add sales tax payable. So I'm going to put it in between the loan account because I might convert this loan account to loan. So I'll put it in between. So I'm going to select column V, right click on column V and insert. And I'm just going to call it sales tax payable sales tax payable and we'll just call it that let's do that and this is going to be equal to the sales price 500 times five and then i'm just going to multiply this times so that would come out to 2500 i'm going to take that amount which i can't see because of, of the color that's weird uh okay paso here something funny is happening all right let's try that again i had to restart the computer times uh, 0.05, which is the tax rate, sales tax. So we're only going to be, then the sales tax is going up by 25. So then uh, let's do this again. Let's pull it down here. Hold on a second. We have this here. This is going to be equal to, equal to the 500 times five units times 0.05. See that again. 125 is that times five units times the sales tax 0.05. There we have it. So the 125 plus the, the 2,500 should give us the 2,625 putting us in balance. Let's copy this down and see if that is indeed the case. Copying this down here and see if this keeps us in balance. That red should turn green if it is indeed in balance and it looks like it is. That's great. Let's do the same thing for this one. So, and I haven't recorded the reduction of the inventory and the related cost of goods sold. I'm going to do that uh, as a second kind of transaction once we look at the sub ledgers. That's kind of the behind the scenes part. And notice you can see them as, in essence, two transactions, even though in a perpetual inventory system, they happen at the same time. I also might want to record the subledger for Anderson guitars as we go. Let's go to, let's do that as we go. So here's my subledger. Let me put the zeros across the board too. 
for crying out loud, you're bouncing all over. I know. I'm sorry. I was put some zeros across the board. That'll help to orientate us so that we see everything. So that I stop bouncing across everything. Okay, so now I'm going to say Anderson Guitars. And notice I have activity in this column. We had 5,000 before. So now they purchased something else and they haven't yet paid us that 5,000. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to Anderson Guitars increasing another 2,625, meaning they owe us the sales price plus the sales tax. And then I'm going to copy down the total. Here's the total. I'm just going to copy that down, which will put zeros all the way down until we get to here. Boop, 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 boop. And then so there we have it. So now Anderson, this column represents the activity for Anderson. If I sum that up, it totals out to 7,625 and two invoices that we have in the total accounts receivable is 23,125, which should match what's on our ledger over here. Let's see if it does. Uh, the accounts receivable, I have to copy it down. Let's do it this way. If I sum these two up, 23,125. All right, so that looks good. Let's do the next one. We're going to say accounts receivable. This time it's going to go up by the sales price, 550 times one, because we're just going to be selling one of these on the invoice. And we're going to say times 1.05, meaning 100% of that plus another 5% for the sales tax brings us to the 578. And then the sales price over here on the sales side, we're going to say we sell the inventory. This is going to be equal to the 550 times one because we only have one of them okay 550 and then the sales tax is going to be equal to once again the 550 times one times 0.05 the sales tax rate let me show you that formula again so it's that sales price times one because we just sold one of them times 0.05 you don't have to say times one here you could eliminate that but i'm just putting the same function in the same formula because that's the sales tax all right so then we have this plus this should equal this let's see if it remains in balance if i copy this down are we remaining in balance are we still standing are we still standing or do we fall over still in balance man let's put some zeros across the board they try to knock us down but no we're still in balance. You can't knock me down, or you can, but then I can see when I'm knocked down because of the. I can see the double entry accounting system tells me if I'm not in balance. And then I'm like, then I fix it. So this is for Anderson again. So we're just going to put them all in Anderson. So I'm going to say Anderson increase another two, 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 two. accounts receivable 578 copying this balance down that means the total balance for ar in the sub ledger is 23703 which should match the total between these three 23703 which we could see down here okay next one ultra base we sold this one for four hundred dollars counts receivable is going to be the 400 we only sold one of them times one times the sales tax 100% plus 0 0.05, 1.05, 105%. 1 the sales price is going to be over here. Sales price is going to be equal to, we're just going to pick up the sales price of 400 times one because we just sold one of them. And then the sales tax is going to be 5% of that sales price. And so we're going to say 400 times one times 0.05. $20 to 20 plus the 420 equals the 420 over here. Let's see if that keeps us in balance. Copying down the accounting equation form you lie. And that red should turn green. It does. Let's put zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay. Boom, boom, boom. And then Anderson over here, same person, is going to go up by that 420, which brings our total sub ledger up from 
103 to 24, 123. Let's check that out over here. That means this plus this plus this should be 24, 123. All right, that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to add it to my, I'm going to do the, do, to the inventory side. We have to reduce the inventory and record the cost of goods sold. This is what you don't see at the check register when you're checking things out, but it's going to be recorded behind the scenes. We need to know about it so we can set up the process properly. So let's put, I'm going to put this at the bottom. I'm going to go to my view tab and I'm going to remove the split, the freezing of the panes, unfreeze the pain, which hurts because I've, I've got some swelling involved here. And, but that's okay. I'm going to unfreeze the pain for the good of the people. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to split the panes view tab. Let's split the paint. So it's on the bottom here. There's the journal entry. And then I'm going to go up top here to where my sub ledger is. So I'm going to go up top and my sub ledger is all the way to the right over here. So we sold an, an ELP. So this, let's put a balance here. This was my prior balance. We sold an ELP on one 16. I'm going to copy the formatting of this one to this one and once again 116 all right so we sold how many of them we sold five of these and they cost four hundred dollars we sell them for five hundred they cost four hundred uh, that's on the purchase side I'm in the wrong area let's put it over here I'm in the cost of goods sold column get it right I'm gonna put negative five we sold them I'll put negative five here and then we're gonna say the unit uh, cost is going to be equal to that 400 multiplying that out negative 5 times 400 is going to be that I'll make this a little bit larger so we can see it okay 2000 so 2000 I'll pull that into the ending inventory so I'm just going to pull it over negative 5 and then the sales price is or the cost is 400 multiplying that out 5 times 400 gives us a negative 2000. I'm going to put an underline here, home tab font group underline equals the sum of these two 71 minus five means we have 66 units left. I'm going to say they all still cost $400. So we're going to take the 66 times the 400. That's going to give us our 26 400 here. Okay, so that's going to be that one. And then I'm going to make this green for now so that when I record it over here, I can, I can easily find this one. So I'll make it green. Let's make it light green. Okay. So then we have an ERP. So here's the ERP. So we'll pick this one up and we'll say this was the balance. And then now we have on, on, I'm going to format paint this one all the way down here and say this is going to be 116 again. So within the cost of goods sold columns, the units that we sold, one unit, the cost is now 440. We sold it for 550, the cost is 440. Total is going to be 1 times 440. Let's make this a negative 1 to be consistent for the selling. And then I'll just pull that over to the ending inventory column, units once again negative 1 and cost 440 multiplying that out one times 440 is a negative 440 putting an underline under these home tab font group underline and we'll sum this up equals the sum six minus one is five still costs 440 and so this is going to be five times 440 we're left with ending inventory of 2200 all right then we sold i think these these are at the bottom this is an, an EPSH, which is down here. So there's that one. So let's format paint this one down below again. And we'll say this is going to be the balance. This is going to be on 116. We are going to be in the cost of goods sold part of this worksheet. So we sold, uh, we sold one of these. The cost is 320. We sold it for 400, but it costs 320. Let's make this negative one. 
multiplying this out, negative one times 320, pulling that into the Indian inventory side, negative one cost 320, one times 320, negative 320, putting an underline, home tab font group underline, pulling this down equals the sum, 16 minus one is 15 units remaining. They all cost 320. So 15 times 320 is 4,800 that we're gonna have left here. Let's make this green like we were before so I can find that easily. And let's make this green so that we can find that easily. Okay, so now, now that we have that, I gotta record the second half of the transaction in my accounting equation. Now that I see these costs and it should match what we have over here. All right, so let's go, let's go to the view tab. Let's split the panes, unsplit the panes, then go all the way to the right. I'm gonna scroll up so I can see my headers, put my cursor in A4, view tab, freeze the panes. Ah, oh, that, man, that's better. Man, it was swelling up again. Oh, I gotta get the swelling down before we unfreeze the pain again. All right, here we go. We're gonna say that in the inventory, so I have to decrease the inventory by five units times the cost of the ELP, which I have to find on my worksheet, right? So it's gonna be equal to five, and then I'm gonna say times, I'm gonna scroll all the way up and then to the right, looking for the ELP, which I made green. So here's the ELPs, the 400 is it. I should get a total of 2000 once I get it. So enter 2000, that looks right, except I need to make it a negative. So I'm gonna put a negative five times 2000. That looks good. The cost of goods sold is us consuming the inventory to generate revenue. So it's gonna be the same number equals, this is the other side of that part of the transaction. That means that the for the sale of this, we earned 500 after consuming the cost of the inventory of 2000. That should keep us in balance over here because we just did two things to two sides of the equation. Looks good. Notice the impact on equity because the impact on net income was 500. Let's do the same thing here. We only sold one of these ELPs, so it's gonna be one times, now we're looking for the ERP. One time, scrolling all the way to the top, scrolling to the right, looking for the ERP. There it is. The unit cost is 440. The total should end up to be 440. So there it is. That looks good. Let's make it a negative though. And then the other side's going to be in cost of goods sold equals cost of goods sold, 440. So the sales was 550 minus cost of goods sold 440. We made income of 110. And then the net impact on the assets is the accounts receivable went up by 578 minus the 440. And then we have the sales tax accounted for on the liabilities. One more time, ultra vez. And then we're gonna say this is gonna be negative one times, scrolling all the way to the top, scroll all the way to the right. We're looking for the greens. So I'm down here this time in the EPSH, looking at that 320. I should get a total of 320, of course. There it is. Then I'm gonna go to the inventory side of things. And uh, this is gonna be cost of goods sold, I mean. And this will also be 320. So three, 400 minus 320 is an $80 profit. And then, and so there we have that, okay still in balance all right let's put the balance down here and then i'm going to sum this up equals the sum wait wait don't do it that way i gotta sum it up over here let's put an underline under all of these to try to keep everything nice and tidy home tab underline we'll put an underline here home tab underline one more time with the underline home tab underline okay now we can sum it up equals the sum of the prior balance that's 60,956 down to the current activity I'm gonna copy this paste it across the board just the formulas though don't mess up the colors you're gonna mess things up 
and we not we have to keep it nice and neat nice and neat people all right and so that keep does that keep us in balance let's copy this down and say does that keep us in balance here's the moment of truth boom 143 596 and that stays in balance now let's just double check that my inventory ending balance is now at the 44 180 let's do a split pane thing again to do that so i'm going to go to the view tab i'm going to i'm going to unfreeze the pane oh no freeze the pane freeze the pane por favor okay and then we're going to say split screen and so there's the number i'm looking for i'm going to be up top go to the right and we're going to say then here's the total of all of the ending amounts here so this is the total of if i look at this do all of the ending numbers of all of our units so that's going to be by the way if you don't have these here they're totally cool things to have they're in the formulas area and i put them in my toolbar because i use them all the time so then so so that ties out so now i'm just going to say the check figure should be this number minus the amount of my gl which is currently this 44 comes out to zero that looks good let's ungreen these because that transaction is done and we'll have to use the green for the new transactions that we're on so we don't get confused try to keep ourselves in the zone keep focus keep our focus on what we're doing people don't lose your concentration and uh, then we're going to go to the view tab and unsplit and then we'll go to the right scroll up top i'm in a4 we're going to go to the view tab and let's freeze the panes again all right we're going to do another one this one we'll do it a little bit faster maybe this time <laughs> so we're going to say on 117 we're going to say that we sell inventory let's just copy this bit but not the name i'm going to copy this bit and paste it here but then i'm going to say we sold it to jones guitar so another invoice it's going to be an elp once again we sold eight of those this time and a giusa on this invoice we sold one of those let's indent these a little to make it a little nicer alignment indent i'll make alignment indent now the sales price i'm going to list here we sold the the elps are once again 500 the giusas are 380. let's record the sales half the amount that we could see on the invoice or in the grocery store when we scan something although we're going into accounts receivable and not paying for it at this time so it's going to be 500 times eight units times the sales tax which is 100 percent of that plus 0.05 which is 1.05 or 105 percent that gives us the 4200 sales side of the transaction we're going to say on the sales side equals 500 times how many units eight not including the sales tax this time because the sales tax is off income statement because the idea is it's on the customer not us therefore we're not going to include it in revenue and we're not going to have an expense related to sales tax so it's going to be equal to the 500 times eight units times just 0.05 i'm going to enter and then go back into it so you can see the formula that number times eight units times the sales tax rate 0.05 the 200 plus the 4000 should equal the 4200 keeping us in balance let's copy this down and see if it keeps the accounting equation in balance just for a double check looks like it should that red should turn green it does let's put some zeros across the board and zeros across the board zeros across the board zero 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 and we're gonna have to adjust those zeros in inventory and cost of goods sold now the sub ledger jones guitars so jones guitars is right here so I'm going to say this is going to be equal to Jones Guitars. Accounts receivable went up by 4,200. Enter. And then I'm going to copy this down. Boop, 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 boop. So the total in my sub ledger is 28, 
323, which should match what's in my accounts receivable here if I add these two up, 28323. So I think that's right. Let's do the Gibson. We only sold, we sold one of these. So same idea. This is going to be equal to the 380 times one because we just sold one. You could leave that off, but I'll have the same format as we did before in the prior one times 1.05 to add the 5% sales tax we need to collect. So we need to collect 399. The sales side, however, is not gonna include the sales tax. It's just gonna be then the 380 times one, if you wanna put the times one, but because we just sold one of them. And then the sales tax off income statement and sales tax payable, which we're gonna have to later pay to the government as they shake us down. It's 380 times one times 0.05. Got to pay it to the mobsters, whoever's, whoever the protection people are. I don't feel protected. Who's going to protect me from the protection people? That's what I need to know. I feel like I'm, they're the most dangerous thugs out there, man. I tell you, anyways, whatever. Let's copy, <laughs> let's copy this down. Got to move out of California. That's if, <laughs> I think the protection, the, my tax dollars are going, they're telling they're, whatever. Let's put some zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. And then in Jones Guitars equals. We're going to increase that by the 399. And we'll copy this down. So my total is at 28722. 28722 if I if I select these 28722 let's put an underline under this stuff for now and put an underline under it I'm kind of getting ahead of myself with the underline but that's okay underline boom all right now before I do the total I need to do the cost side of things so I'm going to do the same trick over here I'm going to put my I'm going to put this on the bottom corner and then select in this cell. And then I'm going to go up top and say view tab. Get rid of the, the uh, freeze panes for now. Because I need to split the pane. i got to scroll back down. Put it on the bottom. Put it on the bottom. And then put my cursor right there. Splitting the pane. Then I'm going to scroll up top. And we're going to go to that ELP again. So the good old ELP. Now I'm going to run out of space down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this whole thing down and give me more space for the ELP because that, oh no. What, what? Because that's the one that's, that we're going to use most often. So I'm going to take this bit, the one below it, and I'm just going to copy it down. So I'm just going to take that. I'm going to grab it right here and just pull it down. Boop, boop, boop. Like, I don't know, maybe like down here. And then I'll give double the space to the ELP. I want to keep the total the same. So I'm going to take that total column and drag it down. So I'm going to drag it down so that that total number will still add up in my total up top. So I'm going to just drag it down. And then I'm going to copy the four. And then I'll just take this whole thing and just copy it down with the format painter or with the just pulling this down. And then this last one, I got to change the formula because it equals the one above it. I just needs to equal the one right above it. And then everything should work still. So there we have it. So now I'm going to say that let's format paint this date range before I do this again, all the way down. So we have the dates in there. This is going to be, I should have put a balance. And now we're on 117. So on 117. We sold negative eight of these. The cost is still 400. Therefore, we're going to sell eight times 400, which is 3,200. Pulling that into the ending inventory section equals eight times, uh, whoops, eight. And then this is going to be equal to the 400. This equals eight times 400. I'm going to put an underline here. Home tab font group underline summing this up equals the sum 66 minus 8 is 58. We still cost 400 each, 
So 58 times 400 is $23,200 worth of inventory left after the sale. We're looking for a GIUSA now. A GIUSA. Here's those ones. So we had, let's copy the formatting of the, oh wait, let's make this one green again so I can easily find it. So I'm gonna make it light green, light green. And now let's find the GIUSA. Okay, let's format paint this down. And then we're gonna say this is a balance and this is going to be 117. We're in the sales column, cost of goods sold, negative one, we sold. The cost is $304. Multiplying that out, one times 304, pulling that over to the ending inventory, we sold one, costing 304. That means one times 304 putting an underline home tab font group underline summing this up equals the sum six minus one is five they still all cost 304 this equals five times 304 changes the total to five one uh two zero okay so those those and let's make this green and now let's use that to record my journal entry so now i'm going to go up to the view tab and unsplit and then i'm going to go to the right all the way to the top in a4 and freeze the pane put some ice on it just put some ice on it it'll be fine just put some ice on it and then we're going to say that in the inventory i'm going to say this equals eight times the cost which i'm going to find on my 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 <laughs> sub ledger i'm going to go all the way to the top i'm just using my arrows and I'm gonna look for that green one that I made green. There it is, the ELP. They cost $400, $400. That should give me the 3,200. It does, but it should be negative. So I'm double click on it, make it negative. And then the other side's gonna be over here. Cost of goods sold is gonna be that 3,200. So my net profit, 4,000 minus 3,200 is $800. We're still in balance in the accounting equation given by the green zero. This one equals one times the GIUSA. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the top, scrolling to the right, looking for the green one for the GIUSA. They cost $304, enter, but I need to make it negative, double clicking on it, make it negative. The other side's gonna be in cost of goods sold equals the 304, boom. Net profit 380 minus the 304 is 76, and I'm still in balance over here. Let's pull the balance down. So the balance, let's just do it this way. This will be equal to the balance, which is going to be d -d 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 equals the sum of the prior balance plus the current activity for that invoice. We will copy that across, copy it across. Pasting it just the formulas only. Pasting just the formulas. Ba boom. Okay. So now let's just double check our ending inventory number. So we're still, wait, let's copy this down first. Copy this down. See if we're still in balance on the totals. Copying this down. Put an underline under here. Home tab, font group, underline. We need an underline under here. Okay, we're still in balance. Now, let's go to my inventory and check that to the subledger. So I'm going to go up top into the view tab and unfreeze the panes, then scroll down to the inventory right there. I want to put it somewhere on the bottom. And then I'll go next to it, view tab, windows, split panes, go above it, scrolling up, scrolling to the right. And so, so now we've got the total here is at the 46. So that looks like it matches. I'm going to fix my check number. So it's going to be this minus the new total in my general ledger. Boom. Zeros. That's good. 
I'm going to ungreen these. Ungreen these, make them blue again. Make them blue again so I'm ready for next time. So my sub ledger ties out. And then I'm going to uh, unsplit, go to the right, scroll all the way up in A4, and freeze the panes again. All right, so you can see how somewhat tedious that journal entry is when you have to manually adjust the, the, the uh, inventory, which again, you could automate with software or you could use like a periodic type of inventory system. And that's clear, those are clearly areas of specialization where you might be specializing in particular industries where you've, you know the system, you know how you could set up particular industries, say, for example, Shopify stores or online websites, possibly those that have sales in multiple states or multiple countries where you have sales tax issues that are going to come into play and whatnot. Those are areas where that you can specialize or that you can avoid and say, I'm not going to deal with those inventory items because of all those complications, which doesn't fit into my, my system. Don't let the customers, you know, your clients push you around. You got to, you got to figure out what kind of clients work for your business model. Okay.